We are so happy you decided to join us here today at Church on the Rock. If this message touches you in any way, let us know about it. You can email pray at jesustherock.org or you can look us up on Facebook or Twitter, Church on the Rock, Pascagoula. If you would like to know how our ministries are touching the lives of others, you can go to jesustherock.org. While you're there, consider fueling our passion to reach the lost and the unsaved by giving to us. You can click on the donate button at the top right hand corner of the screen of our website. Again, thank you for joining us and welcome to Church on the Rock. Now, Jesus was real big about, you know, he was real big about telling, said, go make disciples. Because I know if I make a disciple, then you're going to make disciples. Yes, we need, we need to be born again. He told Nicodemus, you, you, can't, you can't see the kingdom of heaven unless you be born again. So, so that's, that's for sure. But that puts you in a different category. You see, Jesus wants disciples. He made, he had his 12 disciples, then his 11 disciples, and he, and he, and he told his disciples, in fact, um, Mark 16, now he set the standard pretty high for a disciple. I, I'm going to be honest with you. We're, we're going to talk about being a believer. That's, that's different. But to be a disciple, this is the last thing he said. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he'd risen. He said to them, this is the, the red letters as Roger talks about, the red letters. Go into all the world and preach the good news to all nations or to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be, will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. Now, I, I want to be a disciple. I really, I really do. I try. I try hard. But when I start reading some of these standards, in my name, they will drive out demons. Nope. I haven't done that. They will speak in new tongues. Uh, yeah, some. I've, I've had a prayer language. I don't cuss as much as I used to. Um, it's a new tongue. They'll pick up snakes with their hands. Heck no. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. Uh, I, you know, no. Not that I know of. And they will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Matthew, I believe that. I, I practice that. I want that. But if I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, why, why aren't these signs and, and miracles and wonders and healings and salvations and casting out demons, why aren't they following my ministry? I don't know. I mean, just, just last Sunday, we, we laid hands on Matthew coming in and, and prayed for him. And, and, and I believe it, and I've seen it. I've been supernaturally healed. So, I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not the question. But Jesus said, you will be healed. So, if, we're, if we are not here because we're not lost... And we're not here because we're not disciples. By the way, I haven't seen anybody get up and take the seat of a disciple. I was hoping there'd be a couple. Anybody in here want to fill that seat? Because, I mean, we, we hadn't really talked about being 100% obedient to the will of the Father and always being faithful in your tithes and offerings. And, and as Roger's been preaching the last couple of weeks, loving... Loving your, loving your your brothers and sisters, the easy part. But then he went a little further and he said, he said, yeah, but you, you got to love your neighbor, so you don't exclude anybody. And then, as he said, you remember what Roger preached? He said, and it's not just it's not just loving your neighbor in a human love. I want you to love them like I loved you. But then, truly, to be a disciple, if you look at Jesus, Jesus went one step further. He said. You got to love your enemies. 
love those who spitefully mistreat you. Love those who persecute you and slap you and abuse you and crucify you. Love your enemies. Struggle. It's not what I want to do to my enemies. So if we're not there and we're not here, we're somewhere else. Let's look at another different perspective. Wanda, Bobby, pick up the corners right there for me just a second. Okay. All of you then, by virtue of saying this, are believers. Yeah, okay. Got to be careful. Because the scripture says, Thou believest in God, thou sayest well, the devils also believe and tremble. So believing in God is just not enough, there's more. See that line that's drawn down this paper? This is representative of eternity. Now, it's just a small representative because Jesus said, I'm the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end. There is no end of the graph this way. There is no end of it this way. This is just a very small representative, but it will help you gain perspective. You see... Can you see that dot right there, right below the arrow? That little dot? That little dot represents your life. One generation, maybe 75 years, maybe less, maybe more. No one's promised tomorrow. And how you live your life in this dot determines how you're going to live the rest of your life for all eternity. Now, also let me give a perspective. If that dot is equal to about 75 years, since the beginning of recorded time, about 6,000 years ago, see that line right there? Compared to your life, that is recorded history of mankind. That's a blink of an eye compared to eternity. Less than a fraction of a second compared to eternity. But this dot is, determines where you're going to spend the rest of your eternity. Thank you. All right. So we're getting a little different perspective then, and we're finding out where everybody is, and where everybody is pretty much is believers. Believers maybe without necessarily a lot of power in our ministry. That's a different message for a different day. But I want, I want to see what Jesus said about this and about what to look for and about where we are. Uh, Matthew seven fifteen. So, we're believers that doesn't have a lot of signs and miracles following our ministry. What does Jesus say about all that? Some of it's pretty simple. Hey, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes? No. Or figs from thistles? No. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. That's pretty simple. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Not hard to understand there. If you're not producing good fruit, you're going to hell. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Thank you, Jesus. That's pretty simple. 
But not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven, many will say to me on that day, many will say to me on that day, the many are the ones between the lost and the disciples. Hello, many. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Hold on a minute. I thought we just read where he said that in my name, if you're a disciple, you'll speak in new tongues, you'll heal the sick, you'll drive out demons. Didn't he just say that? Didn't he just say that by their fruit, you'll know them? If I saw somebody driving out demons, if I saw somebody laying hands on the sick and they're getting healed, if I saw somebody performing miracles, hey, Eddie, you know what? I'm going to think that, that that's a disciple of Jesus Christ. I am. How do I know that that's a ferocious wolf in sheep's clothing? How, how can I tell that that's not bad, that's good, bad fruit and not good fruit? If you're driving out demons, it seems to me that would be good fruit. And, and, I, and I read this and I get so lost and I get so confused sometimes and I just go, God, I'm trying to be a disciple. I, I, I want to be obedient. But if I am, how come these things aren't following my ministry? And heaven forbid that I should be some false prophet, some ferocious wolf, and cast out demons and, and say the name of Jesus. And everybody look and go, oh, he's a disciple. And, and why, how would demons be cast down at the name of Jesus if it's being ministered through someone who's not truly a believer? I thought about that. The only way I could think about that is is God must say something to the effect of, I'm going to honor my son's name. You, you throw my son's name out, I don't care whether you believe or not. You know, you use it in the right conditions. I'm going to honor that name. But when you look at the outside of what's happening, you don't know. I can't tell from the scriptures. That's why Roger, and he preached and he said, he said, that's why, that's why God knows your heart. That's the only way you can tell. It's not by what somebody does. You can do something for the wrong reason. It's, it's your heart. And only God knows your heart. So how do we, how do we, get, how do we get from there to there or from here to there? If God is the one that knows our heart, how does that transpire? How does that happen? I, I want to I give it to you from one other perspective that we haven't talked about. And that's the perspective that really is the most important perspective. That's the perspective of how God looks at it. Now, to do that... Um, I get to play the role of God for a minute. I like that part. I like that part. But if the Father was speaking to you, here's what he would say. He would say, I love you so much. Each and every one of you. Do you know that I fearfully and wonderfully and specifically created each one of you? Of the billions and billions of people, there's no one else on earth like you. None. And I have a plan and a purpose for your life. I have a plan, Earl, a plan and a purpose for you, just for you. I gifted you 
with gifts that no one else has. No one else in the world. And if you follow my plan and my purpose, you will serve the kingdom in the way that I have created for you and destined for you and planned for you. And so I don't want anyone to perish. I want everyone to be saved. I want all to come to Jesus so that I can spend an eternity with my children. That's, that's, why, that's why you were created, that I could fellowship with you. That's why, that's why I, I did, I, I'm, Jesus, my son, my only son, I made it so easy. It's so easy that, I, that I'm going to prove my love to you, that I'm going to give my one and only son to be a sacrifice for your sins, that all you have to do is just believe. Nothing, just believe and whosoever will do that. I didn't pick and choose. I'm no respecter of persons. Whosoever will believe on my son and his sacrifice will have everlasting life, will never, ever, ever perish. You will be with me forever. So easy. Wait a minute. I'm confused again. Father, Jesus just said, Lord, Lord, those that prophesied in your name and cast out demons, you never knew them. I I thought you said you fearfully created each one of us. You have a plan for each one of our lives. In fact, the scriptures say that you know us so intimately and personally that he knows the number of hairs on your head, Bobby, or lack thereof. He knows how many you lost in the night. Okay, see, he took an inventory to see if you lost one, you you know, to see if you lost one in the night. That's how intimately he knows us. How can you say, I never knew you? And I thought about that. And here's the Lord again. It's not that I didn't know you when you were casting out demons in Jesus' name. It's not that I didn't know you when you were doing miracles in Jesus' name. It's that I never knew you. It's more. You know how I said that if you'll just accept Jesus and come under his blood, that I will remember your sins no more? I I will remember your sins no more. I don't want to spend an eternity with my sons and daughters in heaven looking and going, there's Alex. I remember what she did before she got saved. Oh, yeah. And even after she got saved, she was a handful, let me tell you. And I remember when she did that. And I remember when she did that. And I remember when she did that. Russell, don't sit over there and smile. You did the same thing. I remember all that about you and this and that. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to look and say, that's my son. I'm so proud of him. I love him so much. All that stuff he did before, it's under the blood of Jesus. I don't remember it. I'm God. I can get rid of that thought with, a, with just a single thought. I remember their sins no more. I choose to remember their sins no more. The same way he can say, You may say, didn't we say, Lord, Lord? It's not whether you know me, it's whether I know you. Because if I don't know you, I will have never known you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. 
I'm an earthly father. Do you think I want to live one minute in eternity knowing that one of my children didn't make heaven? Do you think I would have peace and joy and love knowing that one of my children is suffering eternal damnation in hell? No. Couldn't live with it. Couldn't stand it. Now, maybe, maybe he does the same thing to our memories that he does to his. Says, you're not going to remember them. But as I thought about this, I thought, are there sadder words ever spoken in this universe than I never knew you? So, do I specifically understand everything about how to move from here to here? No, I don't. But now that we're all here, now that we're believers, we're under the blood, we've accepted Jesus Christ, we have salvation, now that that's the case then now we have to pay a little more attention to those other scriptures that Paul talked about that said, David, you got to run a race, man. And it's not a hundred-yard dash, and you can't quit tomorrow. It's a marathon, and it goes until the day you die or you're called home because only those that finish the race get the crown. You've got, you've got to start paying attention to those scriptures that says it's just not what Jesus said. we got to do what he said. We've got to produce the fruit where he says, by your fruit I will know you. Amen. So that every time we love our enemy, he gives us a crown of glory. So that we'll have gifts to present to Jesus in heaven. That's what it says. We'll lay down our crowns at his feet crowns that we've received. We won't keep them, but I want some to give. I don't want to come empty-handed, guys. Now, if I am correct and not a false prophet or in a wolf in sheep's clothing, and I believe the words that's written here, I believe Jesus is coming soon. And, and we have got to be about doing the Lord's business now because we don't get a second chance. We don't get a do-over. How we live in this dot, this blink of an eye, determines how we're going to spend eternity. Now, I don't know exactly everything he's got planned. The scriptures say, eye has not seen, ear has not heard those things that the Father has planned for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. But if I had unlimited power and unlimited resources, unlimited assets, do you not know that I would lavish my children? Do you not know how blessed they would be for all eternity? So what do we do? Ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Do you lack wisdom? Ask for it. He'll give it to you. Pray, knock. Ask, invite, seek, study to show yourself approved, a workman rightly dividing the Word of God. Get busy doing what it is we should be doing. Because, guys, we're running, we're falling behind, we're running short. If none of us are willing to stand up and say, Yes, I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus, that's what He's called us to be. And we can, we can no longer play, play a second fiddle in this orchestra. We have got to be about the Lord's business. The time is too short. 
So where do we start? Repentance. Beating on your chest, saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. He loves that. The altar, it's a good place. Do business with the Father here. Larry, seek him, serve him. Do exactly what you're doing. Show up in church, but it's more. Let's just don't be believers just drifting along with the tide. He's called us to be more than conquerors. One day, all of us, all of us at this point, if you're a believer, he's going to say one of two things. He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. But we have the opportunity to be more than servants. I want to hear, that's my son. And he did so good. In him, I am so pleased. Again, we're so incredibly glad you decided to join us here today at Church on the Rock. I pray that this message touched you in a way that only God can get the glory from. If you would like more information on our church and our ministries, you can go to JesusTheRock.org. While you're there, consider giving us a financial donation by clicking on the Donate button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Again, thank you for joining us and have a very blessed day.